pray for uh, Kim Duffy. She's having health issues. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh yes, praise yes, uh, praise the mission team. Hope home. Um, I hope they had a good time and got a lot done. Okay, good. That's great. Yes. Uh, praise or prayers for Judy's sister uh, that passed away and her family. Anything else? I have a couple. Um, as I pulled in the parking lot today, I received a text from Bill Phelps. He and Diana are um, out of town for business, and he received a text from his mother that his father has taken a real turn. And it could be a matter of hours, a matter of days. So he and Diana are wrestling with whether to leave the business trip and come home. His mom has said, you guys just go ahead and stay. He said, but she's just being mom. So he asked that we pray for them today um, so that they would know the right decision to make and in their trips and just to be with the mom. You know, his father, we've been praying for him for a while. This is an ongoing situation. So again, for um, Bill Phelps, his father, mother, that family is a prayer request. Thank you. Um, please stand for the call to worship. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountains' peaks belong to him. He is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry Come, let us bow down to worship. Let us heal before the Lord, our Maker. Please remain standing for the opening hymn.
seated. Scripture reading Luke 18 through 35, 18, 35 through 43. As Jesus approached uh, Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he, heard, when he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. He replied, Jesus asked, said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Scripture reading Luke uh, 9, 1 through 10, 19, 1 through 10. Right? Uh, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacharias. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But be, because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacharias, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. 
So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to the guest of a sinner. But Zacharias stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I am half of my here and now I gave I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to his house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to speak and came to speak and to save the lost. Scripture reading, Mark 8, 34 through 38. When he called the crowd to come along with his disciples and said, Whomever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what 
can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed for them and count and is ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Well, I have to give praise today for Ava. Yes! <laughs> if you were here last week, you know, give praise to Ava. <laughs> and we are so glad that Judy is back. And uh, God has blessed this church so much with people and resources and gifts. And it's exciting when someone can use their gifts at this age. And I appreciate how you all sing out, too. I'm learning so much about this congregation. And one of the things that I've learned is that whether it be horses, dogs, cats, y'all love animals. And I love that about you because I love animals. And I was thinking about when you get a new pet, the first thing is, oh, so cute. New horse, oh, so pretty, right? But the more you learn about that cat, that dog, that horse, the more you learn to love it, right? Because they have personalities, they have characteristics, they react to things, they comfort us, they do things that make us just fall more and more in love. And most of you know, I have a dog named Blondie Dalai Lama <laughs> because they named her Blonda. She's Blondie, she's a rescue dog. Dolly, because I kept trying to call her Dolly, but she wouldn't respond. And Llama, because she has fur like a llama. It's very soft and she's very fluffy. And when she first came, she came out of a rescue environment from North Carolina, which is sentimental, I didn't know at the time, a hoarding situation of 90 dogs. So when she first came, she would not bark. She's like an Australian shepherd type mix. She wouldn't bark, she was afraid. The first time she saw a squirrel in the front yard and she barked and then she stopped and looked at me like, oh no, oh no. I was like, good, good dog, good dog. And so I'm watching her as she's growing more and more to learn about, you know, me learning about her, how I love her so much. And now we have a ritual on Sundays because I let her out as I'm finishing up. She comes in and I say, I'm going churchies, going churchies, I'll be back. And then she stands in the front window, waits till I pull by and wave at her, and then she lays down. <laughs> but because I've learned to love her the more I got to know her. And that's the purpose and why we come to church, is the more we learn about Jesus, the more we learn about this awesome God, the more we learn of the Holy Spirit within our lives, the more we're going to crave it because we love what we learn. The more we hear about these stories of Jesus, my goodness, he walked this earth for us. He laid down his deity. And we're picking up the stories today. He is on his way to the cross, which was the mission of why he came in flesh. So we come upon this story. He's heading toward the cross, and he comes upon this blind man named Bartimaeus. Now, this is not the man born blind from birth. And if you go to the book of Mark, you will find more details about Bartimaeus, more about the story where he's actually named. In our uh, rendition in Luke, his, it's the same guy, but they didn't give his name. But his name is Bartimaeus. Bar means son of Timaeus. He was the son of Timaeus. That's all we know. That's the only name that we have. And so as Jesus is passing by, he's the blind man. Now, since he wasn't blind from birth, he probably saw at some point. Blindness was a common illness and issue in biblical times because they had eye infections. Think about their hygiene. Okay, I'm a nurse, you know. Ooh, can you imagine? They, did, they couldn't take showers like we do. They couldn't. They had constant issues with their eyes. And you know, never, listen, don't touch your face. <laughs> Because your hands are full of germs. And so every time they would touch their eyes, they'd be at risk to these infections. Blindness was a common thing. But when you were blind in Bible times, that was it. You couldn't earn. You couldn't do anything gainful. So you became a beggar. Can you imagine 
if he was at one point a gainful member of society, lost his sight, and now he's become a beggar. So this is where he is. His life had been reduced to begging and seeking. He was at the bottom of the barrel in his life. Now remember, this was an audible society. So even though they didn't have the internet, they didn't have newspaper, news broadcasts, People were talking about this guy named Jesus because everywhere he went, something was happening. Somebody was healed. Somebody was changed. Something was going on. He had raised people from the dead. Come on. They'd heard all this stuff. So the blind man knew this was the story. He knew. He's sitting in this crowd. Throngs of people were following Jesus. And he hears all this commotion. And he says to them, hey, what, what's going on around here? And the people said, you know, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he knew. He knew. Because remember, when your, your senses are down, the other ones perk up. He knew, this is my chance. And he yells. Get ready, Bob. Jesus! Son of David! Okay? He yells. And the people near him go, shh, be quiet. In fact, the original language says that he, the people around yelled, basically, you better be quiet or we're going to make you be quiet. They threatened him. And you know what he did? He yelled louder, Jesus, because he knew that he was passing by. He said, have mercy on me. Now, Jesus stopped. Can you imagine this? The great God, Jesus Christ, has come to this earth with a purpose and a mission. He's on his way to fulfill his mission. And yet, he hears this blind beggar in the back of the crowd that nobody valued yelling for him. And he stops. He stops. And he says, Bring him to the front. Bring him up to me. Now, can you imagine if you were in the crowd, the people that were once saying, be quiet. Now you're like, oh, uh, oh, okay, come on. You know how you would feel? Yeah, yeah, right this way. You would feel really humiliated, wouldn't you? Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Now, do you believe that Jesus already knew what he wanted? Sure, he knew. But sometimes we need to express. I was thinking about, you know, when you have children, when my daughter would cry, You kind of knew what was wrong. And I mean, Jesus knew exactly. But when they express it and they can tell you, right, there's that love bomb that happens. And he says, Lord, I want to see. You wonder if he wanted to see his wife again, his kids again. He wanted to see nature again. But he wanted to see. We We don't know what his plight was up to this point. But we know he was not born blind. And Jesus said, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. That's awesome. And that's awesome. But here's the great part. Immediately, Bartimaeus received his sight, followed Jesus, praising God. And when all the people saw this, they began to praise God. When God blesses you in your life, praise God for it because you will lead other people to praise God with you. So then we go on, and we get to Zacchaeus. Now, let's go back in time. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. If you know it, sing along with me. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Yep, this is the guy we're talking about. And you know what's funny about Zacchaeus? He was a tax supervisor. Now, you have to understand in biblical times, Tax collectors were hated, more so than today. Um, But they were hated because they were crooks. They were collecting money to give to the Roman government. That was one bad thing. And then they were skimming off the top. And now Zacchaeus 
He was a supervisor, so he was not only skimming off the top, but he had his minions underneath, and he was skimming off of them. People really despised Zacchaeus. He was a crook. He was not good. He was very well known, however, and he was short. So he probably had that little man syndrome, you know, where he had that attitude. So he had heard about Jesus, and he wanted to know more about him. And it says he wanted to see who he was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming this way. Now think about this. This is a man who is a businessman who supervises all these people, but he runs ahead and he climbs a tree. Now, if some of you businessmen started climbing a tree, I'd be wondering about you, right? But this is what Zacchaeus did because he was so desperate to see this Jesus. And when Jesus reached that spot, he stopped. Do you notice Zacchaeus didn't yell down? He was a wee little man, so he wasn't like hanging out of the tree. But Jesus knew. He knew he could sense that Zacchaeus was longing for him. He was looking for him. And then when Jesus said, you come on down, I'm going to your house today. Oh, now hold on a minute, Jesus. You can't do that. He is a sinner. He's a bad man. So probably the food you're going to eat is not good because it hasn't been prepared the way that we prepare food. And he, you shouldn't go in his house because he's a bad person. And so the crowd begins to mutter about it. And he say, they say, he's going to the house of a sinner. We, we can't have that. Zacchaeus stood up, even with the crowd muttering about him, because Jesus had said to him, I'm going to your house. Zacchaeus didn't invite him there, but Jesus knew that he needed to go there. He wanted the crowd to see this man is, is someone I love as well. This man I love as well. Zacchaeus immediately says, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. He says this in the crowd to Jesus. He was repenting. He realized that he needed this Jesus. Can you imagine, have you ever been in a crowd and you've been picked out by someone special, that, that, that feeling that you're like, wow, here's throngs of people. Here's this little guy who's probably been ignored except for despising him. And the man that is featured, that everyone is following, stops and called him by name, Zacchaeus, you come down. Jesus then says to Zacchaeus, today, Salvation has come to your house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Jesus came for everyone. He loves everybody, whether they're good, bad, ugly, pretty. God loves everyone. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost. In John 3.17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is where we as Christians get it backward. We have our rules and our regulations, the do's and the don'ts. We've talked about that some. A lot of people are offended by church people because we want people to fit this box and come into our congregation in this way. That's not how it goes in the kingdom of God. Jesus loves everyone. We love everyone right where they are. Our job is not to point out their sin. Our joy is to be more like Jesus where they see him in our lives and Jesus will point out their sin and what they need to change. That is our job, to become more like Jesus, to become more in this understanding that Jesus came for everyone, everyone. You may not like them, but you better love them. 
because they are a being that God created. We must love them. Here's what I want you to understand. Our sermon title today is Through, Up, and Over. Blind Bartimaeus, he went through the crowd to Jesus. Zacchaeus went up to see Jesus. Jesus was lifted over all to reign over sin and death. We must choose to live for Jesus over anything else. Our scripture passage in Mark said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Now, that's the first part of this verse. I want, I want to tell you this. To be a Christian, you must not live a life of downtrodden, I'm carrying my cross, this is what I must do to follow the Lord. No. There is joy in Christ because we know that when you accept Christ and you bring him into your life, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And what's the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We have a joy in us through Christ. So you can carry that cross, which means live as a disciple of Jesus, learning every day to be more like him and still have joy. Because who wants to be part of some following if all you do all the time is frown and talk about your horrible life? That's not the joy of the Lord. You will have problems. But you got somebody that conquered death, came to life for us, and he is the power within us. The same God who raised Jesus from the dead is alive in you today. If you claim Christ, you have that power within you. We should not walk around as Christians with a defeated lifestyle, a defeated attitude. We are victorious even in the trial. We will be victorious. Sorry, I started preaching. Didn't mean to. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Get your priorities in order. Get your priorities in order. And you know how we do that? By getting to know Jesus more. Spending time in this word. Praying. Being in fellowship. Coming together. This is how we learn to be more like him. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? I mean, really. There's a great song out a few years back. I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my soul. Got a good groove to it. Because what, what good is it? It's all temporary. What can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Nothing. In this life, what must you push through? What must you climb above, up and above, in order to be with Jesus? In order to have a greater relationship with him? This is why we come together. This is why the word of God has been given to us. Through, up, over. Think of these words as you marinate on the scripture. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for all that you have done for everyone in this room, but greater than that, Lord, we just praise you for who you are. God, we come before you today hearing this word that we can be sharpened to learn to love you more so that we become more like you, so that we can draw others to you which is why we are here. Lord, you came to seek and save the lost, and you are using each of us to do that, to make your kingdom come here on earth. Lord, you are so good to us. You have blessed us. And you also know that we walk through this life where there are trials and there are problems and there are burdens. Lord, for the prayer requests that we've heard, for those who need healing, for those in the room that didn't express a prayer request, but you know their heavy heart, Lord. 
We know that you care. God, we lift specifically the Phelps to you today. Give Bill a peace to know what to do. Give him and Diana Phelps travel mercies, Lord, so that they know exactly what they need, to, where they need to be. Lord, be with his father, who is a believer, Lord, in this transitioning time, and give his mother comfort. Lord, thank you that confidently everyone on that prayer list, every time we lift them to you, you hear and you are answering the prayer in the way that you see best. And Lord, help us to continue to walk in your strength, in your just great joy that you give us and knowing that you have conquered all and that we get to be with you. Lord, thank you for this service today. Thank you for the way that you will continue to lead us as we walk out today. And God, I ask that you would just help us to remember always how much you love us and that we can fall more in love with you. Lord, for those hearts you are dealing with today, thank you for moving. Thank you for speaking, Lord. And now, Lord, with confidence, we come to you with the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if our ushers will come. Doxology. gifts you've given us, Lord, we give them back to you in order that we may help grow this kingdom with the power that you've given each one of us. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, as you go out today, I want you to fall more in love with Jesus, because the more you learn about him, the more you will fall in love with him, and you'll be able to go through, up, and over. Amen. And now let us sing our song of fellowship, more like you, Jesus. <laughs>